Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Now we're going to turn in our Bibles to Galatians, and I'm just going to do a short little part. Uh, we, we were learning of the fruits of the Spirit, you know, the love, joy, peace, patience. We did the first one, love, in detail when I ended the week before last, uh, before I departed for Arizona. And I'd like to pick up with that verse, if you don't mind. It's, it's Galatians 5, there around verse 22, if you want to get it, look look on with me in your Bibles. And many people are familiar with this passage, but I promised the kids I would go back. I only did w- one fruit in detail, the first one, love. You know, we went to 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, does not brag, does not boast, does not end, right? You guys know the 1 Corinthians passage. Well, in, in I gave you a self-test. Did anyone do the self-test? Did you, did you go home and read that passage? And um, just put your name in for everywhere it says love. Just say, is he as patient? Is he as kind? Love? Is he does not brag? He's not arrogant. Does not je- right? Does not seek his own. You guys all laughed at my expense when I did that. But how many of you did it with your own name? Because since we're starting off the year, y- you know how folks make those New Year's resolutions. For all, it, it's always usually for the body. I'm going to get in shape, man. And one, one sister was telling me yesterday that she's like, I, I have a goal. I want to run a marathon at the end of the year. I'm all excited about it. But I just can't seem to find the time to run, even though I have a treadmill next to my bed. But I just use it to hang clothes on to dry. And I was like, uh, yeah, that's pretty much, you should use that thing. You know, it's, it's right there. You, but we, we make all these resolutions for our body. You know, I'm going to get in better shape, take care of myself, do this. But I want to suggest that you make a resolution for your spirit. Get your spirit in better shape this year. And there's a truth that the Bible teaches that all of the truths that are down here in this earthly realm are, are but shadows of greater truths in the spirit. If you'll learn the things that God has for you to, to become a man, that, a woman with, with godly discipline, you'll find it will, it will trickle down to your earthly life very easy. You'll, you'll gain physical disciplines. Maybe in areas you've wrestled with forever and you could never get a, a handle on if you'll just seek the Lord and say, Lord, help me grow. He will. And as you grow in your spiritual man, in, your inner man, Paul calls it, you will become strengthened with resolve to be able to handle those other outward things, the physical things that you might have been wrestling with. And I, I want to set you up for, for success this year in the Lord, that you do really well. So Paul has been describing the fruits of the Spirit, and we've read through it already, but I'm going to come back to do the second two fruits in detail this morning. We, we did the first fruit is love. What were the next two fruits? In Galatians 5.22, the next fruit of the Spirit is listed joy and the following one peace now i know that there's more in the list but patience kindness gentleness all those in fact all of these fruits when they grow in your life he said paul said against against such things as these there is no law this is the question the kids are what's the rules you know what do i have to do if i'm going to be a good christian what is there a rule book and I'm like, um, it's kind of, Jesus made it a lot simpler than the Levitical law. He just said, love the Lord and love your neighbor as yourself. You'll fulfill the whole law. That's all you got to do. Love the Lord, love your neighbor, all good. But Paul, he takes it down to the, 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 the I quote, the, the spirit of that. He says, if you walk in the spirit, God's spirit will bring out these fruits of the Spirit in your life. You'll have love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness, things like this. Against these things, there is no law. You don't even, you don't need a rule book when you're walking in kindness. 
Because you're not going to do the thing, you know, that you would have done that was unkind. You don't need someone to tell you don't do unkind things because, well, you just do it because you're already walking kindly. So Paul says the first fruit was love. But the next two are the ones the kids, uh, if I could share with you an insight on these two next fruits of the Spirit. The second one, joy. That's easy for me to remember because my firstborn is named Joy. And she's a joy to me. But the joy, it says, of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is our what? It's our strength. Have you met any Christians that have no joy? Like, and you're like, what's your problem? Shut up, I'm a Christian. And you're like, I feel so weak. Oh, the burden of the Lord is so heavy on me. Oh. And you're like, wait a minute. Jesus said, my burden is light, right? My yoke is easy. My burden is light. You must be carrying the wrong burden. And by the way, don't worry. In the, in the days of Jesus, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees. He said, you guys tie up heavy loads and you put them on men's shoulders. You won't even lift a pinky to help them. You're so rude to them. You know, put the, these heavy weights, all these rules. And, and if you go to churches where they put all this heavy trip on you, and you come away feeling, man, I just feel like way down. That preacher, he just whipped it on me, man. I, oh, man, I just want to. That was not the burden of the Lord. That's the, that's the very same sin that the Pharisees and the scribes did to the people of their day. And by the way, do we have Pharisaical Christians? Yeah. I don't know what, a, what it is about them that they, 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 they reproduce. They, they replicate, they show up, and, and they've done it over the ages through the church history. If you study church history, they just keep popping up. You're like, go away. The Bible says it was for freedom that Christ set you free, not to put you into bondage. But some preachers, they forgot to read that part. We're to be set free from this stuff and to have the burden of the Lord. That burden is light. His, his, it's easy, right? It's not to be heavy on you. Following the Lord is great. It's like, I don't have to remember all the rules because I just walk in the things of the Spirit. I walk in love. I walk in the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord, that's our strength. But see, when David sinned with Bathsheba, you guys remember, he cried out right away, Lord, create in me a clean heart, oh God, right? And renew a right spirit. And cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit. And um, restore unto me the joy of what? So, so Some of you know the song. I can't really say the verse anymore because I try to sing it. You ever have to have me memorize the verse from the song and you can't actually just say the words. you got to sing the song. Sorry. You get the message though, right? He, when he sinned, he noticed his joy went away. And he said, is there a whale? Oh, there's a whale right there. Yeah, get out of the way so the camera guy can. Right there, big one to the left of the rock. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, here, let me sit by you guys. <laughs> this is so nice to show to the folks on the mainland. Listen, I got a whole bunch of people watching our YouTube just because I said, oh, by the way, we had whales on Sunday. If you want to look at our message uh, on the Virgin Mary at the end, and all of a sudden our views jumped like crazy. <laughs> they didn't believe me before, but they believe me now. So come back, whale. Just, just they say they're not in great numbers this year. Not in great numbers, but we'll take all of them that didn't come visit for church. Now, those of you that know, I've shared this before, but we do not worship whales at our church. We worship the Creator, not the creation. But what we, we know the scripture says all of creation testifies of his glory. Even from the, the birds in the air, the trees of the field, the fish in the sea. That it hit, what a great creator we have. I don't know about you guys, but how, how many of you have seen that, that um, underwater uh, where they go in the deep trenches and they found these iridescent things that are like glowy and everything. And, and creatures that have never been you know, brought to the surface. 
mile down and they're living and I go, Lord, you are amazing the, the, the things you make. It just shows off your greatness. Well, hey, you guys, move to the left, please. We're trying to watch whales. <laughs> it's part of being on the beach. Well, the, let me finish this up. And if the whale comes back, tap Dylan really fast, okay? I'll, I'll preach over here. I want to show these guys, you know, let them see our, 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 wall, our church wallpaper, man, it is awesome. So what a great God we have. Well, when da back to David. When he sinned, he felt his joy go away. And that's one of the things about sin. It, qu it quenches our joy. It like put, it's like a, if it was a fire, it's like pouring a bucket of water on the fire. It just puts it out. And the Bible says clearly, don't quench the Holy Spirit of God. What by you were sealed by that Spirit until the day of redemption. Don't don't pour that water on and put out that sweet Spirit that God has given you. And when we sin, our joy goes away. And you you know sometimes Christians come in and they 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 look so downcast. There's no joy, and they want to talk to me. And they're like they they're trying to figure out where to start. And I just, all right, what's the sin? How did you know? Well, pretty much you have no joy. And it's, it, it's not a new thing. It happens to a lot of believers. Their joy goes. So you need to pray like David did. Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. And don't take away your Holy Ghost from me. I need it. And cast me not away from your presence. And restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Bring me that joy back because that joy of the Lord, that's our strength. That's truly where we get our strength. There's the whale over there. Oh, just dove. Okay, Dylan, you get that and I'll just praise the Lord. This is so cool. So with joy, I want to ask you something. Is joy, you know, some people think of joy as a happy feeling. Um, based on, you know, just circumstance or something. It's not. If you look up joy, happiness is that happy feeling you get based on some circumstance. Joy is a happy feeling you get not based on circumstance, but rather based on relationship. When your relationship is right with your creator, there's a joy in your heart. How about when your relationship is right with your spouse? Is there joy in your marriage relationship, you know? Yeah, happy wife, happy life says. <laughs> when you, but when, you're, when your relationship is, is right, I'm saying, and you know when you're doing right to your spouse and they're doing right to you, is there joy in those types of marriages? Because the Bible says marriage is a great mystery. It's, it's an earthly representation of a greater truth. What's the mystery? Christ and his what? Church. His church. And, and you want to see joy in good action, look at a marriage where the, where both both parties are doing right with each other. And in and and, and that relationship, there will be joy. Not based on circumstance. They could have horrible circumstances. Have you ever met couples going through a horrible circumstance, but the couple still has joy? How do they do that? Because they're right with each other, and they're right with the Lord. Very important that we understand the source of our joy is not by situation, but by relation. Keeping a good, healthy relationship between you and the Lord and a good, healthy relationship with others, and your joy goes up. But what if you say, well, yeah, I'm going to keep a good relationship with God, but I hate that guy over there. I'm mad at him. I'm not going to forgive him. You guys remember the Lord's Prayer, you know, that we were taught, Our Father, which art in heaven? Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, the one I referred to earlier. Right, thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? On earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day daily bread. And um, what's that next part? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the kingdom, the glory, right forever and ever. Amen. What's the next verse say in Matthew 6, verse 17? For if you forgive men their sins, so will your heavenly Father forgive you. By the way, this is the only commentary Jesus gives on that whole prayer. And what's the very next verse? If you do not forgive men their sins, 
neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. Are you in right relationship with that person if you're holding unforgiveness? No. And you know what? That will hinder your joy. Because if you won't forgive your brother, is God forgiving you? It's a loaded prayer. I don't know if you ever thought this one through. <laughs> it is. Look, you, you prayed. How many of you prayed that prayer before? Raise your hand truthfully. You prayed, Lord, forgive me my sins as I forgive those who trespass me. Yeah, right. If you prayed that, you just prayed, God, forgive me like I forgive others. What if you don't forgive others? What did you just pray? God, don't forgive me because I'm not forgiving him. I know you didn't really think that, but you prayed it. And by the way, that's the only part Jesus commented on and said, if you don't forgive, neither will you be forgiven. Now, if you want to start off this year on the right spiritual note, you've got to let go of all that unforgiveness. Because by holding on to it, it's eating at you. And what's it doing to your joy? It's tanking it, man. Your, your joy meter goes, Pfft. pegging below zero. You know? And God's going, forgive him. And if you don't forgive him, I'm not going to forgive you. It's pretty serious. He doesn't even make it, like, optional. To me, I mean, that's pretty cut and dry. If, if, if I want forgiveness, i got to forgive. But how many times do people say, well, I forgave all those other people, but there's one person. You just don't know how bad this person was to me. I don't have to. I had a few of my own. But I will tell you that until you forgive... You won't experience fullness of joy. You will wrestle with it. Every sermon you ever hear will prick your heart about that you need to forgive and let it go. But you'll be stubborn. And you'll keep holding on to it. And guess what? You'll be one of those Christians. <clears throat> What's your problem? I have no problem. Anyway. They'll be like, well, you got a problem. <laughs> You're a grumpy Christian. In fact, we don't like being around you. You're joy. Bad. No joy. And you know, the, the cure for this is really easy. Let it, you remember when we studied about anger in the book of Jesus? There was a time limit on how long you could be angry. You could be angry, there's some conditions. Be angry and sin not, right? So you could be angry, but don't sin. And the time limit was, don't let the sun... Since we're facing west, you all, right there, that's where it goes down. Don't let the sun go down. As soon as that sun touches the water, you got two minutes and 13 seconds from the time the bottom of the sun touches till the top of it disappears. I've timed it over and over. You can check if you want. Two minutes, 13 seconds. It, it, the irony is it's John Higgins' favorite number, 213. I, when I told him, John, do you know it takes two minutes and 13 seconds from the time the bottom of the sun touches the horizon till the sun goes bloop? And it's gone. He's like, oh, that's perfect. That's a <laughs> it's his favorite number. He's, but it, he has for a different reason. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost to him is one, two, three. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. All, all of those you know, are represented in, to him in, in that numerology of two, one, three. Well, you got two minutes and 13 seconds from the time the sun touches that horizon line till it disappears. And guess what? You need to let it go. Whatever you were angry about, time's up. You don't get to keep it for the night. And in fact, I encourage you, don't. Because then I have to visit you in the hospital with ulcers and agita, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think of what that is in English. Heartburn, right? Is that what you call it? Like the pains right here up in there and heartburn. And you get all this stress and high blood pressure and all this. Let it go. If you're going to start off this year right in the Lord, I want you to walk in fullness of joy. Because the joyful Christians have the strength of the Lord. And you know, when we run out of strength, we just, we just did a, a word of encouragement for the kids on YouTube about what about when we feel weak. You know, the Bible says, wait on the Lord and remember Isaiah 40? What is it, verse what is that, 40, 31, somewhere in there? Wait on the Lord and you will, you will renew your strength. You'll mount up with wings like eagles. You run, you'll 
not grow weary, you walk, you will not faint. Right? That verse? That's, that's a beautiful verse. But it says you've got to go to the Lord. It doesn't say that you have all the strength in yourself. It says you just wait on Him and He gives you the strength. And He's the giver of that strength. And the joy that the Lord gives. Oh, the well of strength. How much is that well? I mean, how deep? Does it ever run out the, the, when you have the joy of the Lord? Do, do you ever run out of His strength? Never. So I want to teach the kids, well, you adults too, to stay walking in the joy of the Lord. And if you find your joy gone, examine yourself and say, all right, Lord, what did I do wrong? You know what? It must be some sin creeping. And it, it can sin creep even in, into even an older believer's life? I mean, someone's been serving the Lord 20, 30, 40 years. Sure. It's so subtle that, that we have to guard ourselves. But we're starting off the year, so let's just start off right. Let's check ourselves out and get ready. Now, the second fruit that I'd like to cover this morning, besides joy, is peace. This is a peace what Jesus spoke of in John. In the 14th chapter, he said, My peace I give you, my peace I leave you, not as the world gives, give I to thee. His peace is a peace that's different from the world. The world's peace says... You say, what's the definition of peace? They say, absence of conflict. I just don't want it. If, if I had no conflicts, then I'd be at peace. Is that biblical, scriptural peace? Do we have no conflicts as believers? No, we have conflicts galore. But we have a peace that surpasses all human comprehension because the Bible says that no matter what we go through, that the Lord is with us. And when we know the Lord is with us, it doesn't matter how bad the circumstances. See, our peace is not predicated just like jo our joy is not predicated on circumstance. Neither is our peace. Our peace doesn't come from situations. Doesn't come from items. It comes from our relation to, to our maker. And when we're in right relation with him, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Oh, he's, he's blowing out there. What? Just to the left of the tree, right out there, over that little wave there. Yep, see him blowing? Put the camera on those blowing things right there, would you, Dylan? There's his back right there, just a smidgen. Some of you are like, you have really good eyes. I, I do for far away. I had to get a big print Bible so I could see up close. But there's two of them right there. Here for the guys over there. He's over there. I, I feel like I'm standing in the way of the camera, but over yonder. This is going to be so fun to show off. Dylan's over there with that big camera zooming in. Okay, listen to my voice. Watch the whales. Free show. Get extra spiritual encouragement, okay? you got to learn to roll with the punches when you're preaching on the beach. So... When it comes to my peace, my peace comes from the fact that it's the peace of the Lord. It's His peace. His peace is, it, it's not saying you need to have perfect circumstances to be at peace. It's rather to, to know that He's with me in whatever circumstances I'm going through. I could be going through horrible circumstances, but I know who's with me. Is the Lord with us? Does he ever leave us? Does he ever forsake us? Scripture says, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Even unto the end of the age, Jesus said, I will be with you. Now that's the source of our peace, knowing that the Lord is with us. Now those of you that are married, have you ever experienced that with your spouse when, when, when one of them's feeling lonely or, or they're, they're home alone and you're at work and you... And you call them and they're just like, hey, I just, I, I feel a little weird. I wish you were here. And you get home and all of a sudden, they're at peace because, you know, you're together. That's a, that's a, that's a peace that comes from relationship. Not from, not from stuff, not from material things. From true relationship. When you're with the person that you love, it's like, it doesn't really matter all this. The toaster broke, oh well. 
you know, the microwave. In our house, it's the oven, the microwave, the front of the refrigerator, and the ice maker on the down thing, and then we have a the old fridge on the lanai for the church stuff, and that ice maker broke. And then the tiles started breaking on the counter, and the grout fell out, and and if I went by all the stuff that was breaking, I'd have no peace. I'd have no joy. I'd, I'd have no happiness. I'd be like freaking out. Everything... Except that there's a scripture that says that all these things testify when Peter wrote that all of these things will be, well, they're going to go away. They'll, they'll all be consumed Sunday by fire. It's all going to burn, he said. And I get great comfort because I remember Pastor Chuck one time, <laughs> he shared a story about, you know, when people went to Costa Mesa, they had a lot of cars. And, and they're trying to get into one service. You know, first service is leaving. Second service folks are arriving. and They're jockeying for, you know, parking spaces. And, and some fella had a nice new car, and he didn't want to get a ding on the side. So he parked way, way, way out there. But then somebody came next to him, parked next to him, and opened the door, you know. And Chuck was um, in his car. It wasn't real fancy, but this is many years ago. And he was relating the story that one of his elders was with him in. They had, the only space was kind of a ways down. He took it and someone opened the car and, and dinged his, his door. But it was, even though it was an old car, it was in good shape. You know, it was like ding free, but not now. Right before he preaches. And the, and the, and the younger man was looking at him like, is Chuck going to like lose his cool here and blow his cork, you know? And, ah, why'd you buy my car, you know? Don't you know I'm the pastor or whatever? And Chuck's answer was, he looked to the younger man, because he could tell he was wondering what he was going to do. He goes, it's all going to burn. It's all going to burn. It's just, a, it's just a thing. And he didn't even let him phase him, walked in and preached the message. Just like, it's, it's just stuff. And if we put all our focus on stuff, we become very unhappy people. But if we take care of our relationships with people, Though the stuff breaks and falls apart, it's not going to rob us of our joy or of our peace. And I want to share that with you to start off your year this year. That you could be a people that walk in these fruits of the Spirit and really get to experience them and, and keep them in perspective. It has nothing to do with materialistic stuff. You know, what's more important to, to the Lord, stuff or people? People. Let's don't forget that. As we're here sharing the good news about Jesus, Jesus is not focused on stuff. He's not focused on how you dress on the outward. He looks at the heart. Stuff is nothing. We, don't take any, we didn't come into this world with any of it, and we don't get to take any of it out. So keep the perspective this year. And if you could maybe use this message to weave it into your New Year's resolution, try to get more more of God's love, more of His joy, and more of His peace. And all the rest of it, it takes care of itself. Just what Dottie said, takes care of itself. Okay? N next week, if you don't mind, I promise the kids I go over those other ones, those, you know, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. I'll give a little bit about those ones to start off our year. You know, we, we kind of need those things too. They're also fruits of the Spirit. So we'll do those, and then the following week, we'll do Galatians 6. So those of you who like to read ahead, know where we're going, please do. And, uh, and you just feel like you're, you know, even the people listening now on the, on the Internet, they go, they're, they're telling me, oh, that was a great message. I can't wait to hear the next one. What, what's it going to be? I'm like, the next chapter. Uh, uh, so now I'm, you guys have a bulletin, so you already know. It says, please read this Galatians 6 for 5 and 6 for next week. They don't have the bulletin. So for you guys on YouTube... Read Galatians 5 and 6, and we'll come back to it and get more encouragement. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time that we get to spend in your word. We thank you for the whales coming to visit us, Lord. We're so grateful that you're a God that, that lets us see your handiwork all around us. Lord, now I pray as we go from here, you would fill us with your love, with your joy, Lord, and, and your peace, that we can start off this year in a wonderful way. And we ask it now in Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen. 
Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.